Now, when you're starting out and you first buy a camera, you start off with the camera itself, a memory card to save your photos, maybe a spare battery and a bag to put everything in. And mostly that's all you need to get you started. But take a look at these photos. Now, I couldn't have taken these photos without the aid of a tripod. So in this video, I want to talk about why I think you should consider buying a tripod. I'm going to talk about what to look for when choosing a tripod. And if you've already got a tripod, please stick around. So I've also got some tripod tips and more all coming up. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post regular photography tutorials. I share tips and tricks. Occasionally I do gear reviews as well. So if you are new here, please consider subscribing. Now, as I said in the intro, this video is all about tripods. If you've already got a tripod, I hope you're gonna stick around and watch the video because I've got some cool tips I wanna share with you. But if you haven't got a tripod, I definitely recommend you stick around because I'm gonna be talking about what you should consider when purchasing and choosing a tripod. Now, before we get into that, I think the best place to begin is to talk about why you should buy a tripod. What purpose does it serve and how can it improve your photography? Now, a tripod is a very popular accessory for landscape photographers, astrophotographers, product, macro, even sometimes portrait photographers use tripods. And the main reason for this is to give us sharper images. So here's an image that I took just yesterday on what was a beautiful sunny afternoon. Now here you get to see the process and all the camera settings in real time as I take the picture. So I have the camera's ISO set at 200, the aperture is at f8, and if we take a look at the light meter, we can see that I'm slightly overexposed. So I'm going to increase the shutter speed to fix the exposure. Take a picture. Now I do want to take a second picture and make it a bit brighter. So I'm going to slow the shutter down slightly, and this will give me a slightly overexposed picture. And this is picture two, and this is the image that I ended up using. So with this image, I used a shutter speed of one one thousandth of a second. Now that's a fast shutter speed. And the reason I used the fast shutter speed is because the picture was taken towards the middle of the day where there's lots of light available. So I didn't need the shutter to open too long. If the shutter was open too long, I'd let too much light into the camera and I might end up overexposing my image. So fast shutter speeds are great when you're shooting in good light. But what happens when you're shooting in poor light? Well, when there's not much light available, an effective way of taking a great photo is simply to do what is called slowing the shutter down or do a long exposure, which basically means that instead of the shutter opening and closing really quickly, it opens and stays open a bit longer and allows more light to be captured by the camera. Now, if we take a look at this photo, which is taken at exactly the same spot as the first image, but clearly at a different time of day, just after the sun has risen, there was less light available when I took this picture. So I had to slow the shutter down. Shutter speed here was half a second. Now I can't handhold a camera for half a second and expect a sharp image, hence a tripod. So if you wanna take photos in low light, do nighttime photography and long exposure photography, a tripod is essential. Now in a few minutes, I wanna talk about what to look for when choosing and buying a tripod. But first, I've got some really cool tripod tips I wanna share with you. So for this part of the video, you find me in the awesome Brilliant White studio, which is part of Brisbane Camera Hire. Many thanks to Susan from Brisbane Camera Hire for allowing me to use this space. Now, the first tip I've got for you is not to let your tripod dictate your composition. Now, what I mean by that is I've just set this tripod up. This is the fully extended uh, Manfrotto tripod. I pop the camera on the top, and of course, I can change the composition quite easily using the tripod head, but I have restricted my composition to this viewpoint. Now, this may not be the best view, uh, viewpoint to take the picture. What if the better composition is shooting from a slightly lower vantage point? Well, now I've got to reset the tripod. So my first tip is think about your composition carefully first, and then set up your tripod to suit that composition because a fully extended tripod is not always the best vantage point to shoot from. Here you can see I've got the tripod set up low to the ground. Only the front leg is slightly extended to allow for the uneven sloping rock. 
Now the lower to the ground you can get the camera, the better the stability will be. Now this was particularly important for this image as the shutter was open for over five minutes. So my next tip is all about stability. Now with tripods, you have extendable legs and this particular tripod has three sections. And what you're gonna see is the top part of the leg is wider than the next part. And this is wider than the bottom part. And the wider the leg is, the more stable the tripod will be. So if my composition means I'm gonna be shooting low to the ground, I can pop my camera sorry, my tripod down, and this is going to be really, really stable. But if I want to get a bit higher, what I'm not going to do is extend the thinner leg because that's less stable than the middle leg. I'm only going to extend the middle section. And this means that the tripod will be nice and stable when I pop the camera on it. So again, another tip geared towards stability, which is the whole point of using a tripod anyway, extend from the top. Now, most of the tips that I share with you on this channel are based around my 12 years experience teaching photography and are based upon things that I've seen people do, mistakes I've maybe seen people make. And this is not just beginners, this is also sometimes professional photographers. Now, this tip is pretty simple and somewhat obvious, but I'm gonna share it with you just the same. When you've got your camera on your tripod and you have your composition just right, double check and make sure that every single thing is tightened up. Number one, you don't want your camera to fall off the tripod. You don't want the tripod legs to shift and the tripod fall over and damage your camera. And you don't want the camera to move at all whilst you're taking the picture, otherwise it may be blurry. So again, it is a simple tip, but it's incredibly important. Tighten everything up. Now, before I move on to the next tip, I just want to tell you about a very special offer from Skillshare who have kindly sponsored this video. I've always been a very creative person and I've always enjoyed arts and creative outlets, be that music, photography, creating videos for YouTube or working on the Photo Genius website. And because I believe you never stop learning, I'm always keen for new ideas and inspiration. So for me, Skillshare is the ideal platform. An online learning community with thousands of inspirational classes, Skillshare includes topics such as graphic design, illustration, music, photography, web design, and much, much more with no ads. I've been checking out YouTube tips from MKBHD and you can too because for viewers and subscribers to this channel, Skillshare have a very special offer. The first 1000 people who use the link in the video description will get one month's free trial of Skillshare. So make sure you don't miss out. All you need to do is click on the link below this video and join me and thousands of others to improve your creative skills with Skillshare. So now let's talk about the center column, which allows you, if you want to, to raise the camera even higher. Now, can be useful at times, but generally speaking, you're gonna get more stability from the legs as opposed to the center column. The higher this camera goes, the less stable it's gonna be. So unless you absolutely have to, my recommendation is to keep the center column down. I certainly wouldn't extend the center column over extending the legs because you've got three legs, they're more stable. So this tip, again, it's all about stability, very simple. Unless you have to, don't extend the center column. Now my next tip is for leveling off your camera, making sure that your horizons are horizontal. We can fix these things using Lightroom and Photoshop, but look, let's try and get as many things correct in camera as possible. It certainly saves us time. Now with most um, tripods, you will find they have what's called a built-in spirit level. On this uh, tripod, it's just here underneath the tripod head, and it's very simple. I've extended the legs, they're all evenly extended, and I look at the little bubble and it is perfectly level. So I know the legs are level but the camera itself may not be because of course the camera can move independently of the legs using what is called the tripod head so my recommendation here if your camera has it to use your camera's inbuilt level meter and with most cameras that's usually a case of pressing the info button or display button on the back of the camera Having a level tripod and camera is particularly important if you want to create panoramic shots like this one this pano is actually made up of 10 separate images. And if you want to know how I created this image, just click on the link. 
If you like taking photos of moving subjects, which could of course be wildlife or maybe sports photography, then whilst a tripod will give you some stability, it may not be the best choice because it's gonna restrict your movement somewhat and it's gonna also slow things down. Better might be investing in a monopod, which is just like a single tripod leg. I use this all the time. What's great about it is you get that stability, but you also get the, um, the opportunity to quickly pan and react and move with the subject. This particular one is also made by Manfrotto who made this tripod. It's a three section, so it can pack down nice and small. I keep it in the back of my car. I use it all the time and it's absolutely fantastic. This one is quite tall as well, so there you go. If you like shooting moving subjects, a tripod may not be the best choice. What might be great is a monopod. Now you can buy tripods that also have a removable leg, which doubles as a monopod. And of course, this may be really good value for money. Now I wanna talk about some important things that you will want to consider before you purchase a tripod. And to make this easy, what I'm gonna do is break tripods down into four popular categories. First, we're gonna look at budget all-in-one tripods. Then we're gonna take a look at travel tripods, followed by professional tripods, and then mini tripods. So at the budget end of the range, we have what is called the all-in-one tripod. And it's called an all-in-one tripod because the head and the legs are all one piece. You can't separate them. You can't switch the heads like you can with the more professional tripods. This particular one has two levers on each leg. So there's three leg sections. I'm gonna quickly show you how it extends. Like so, very quick, very simple pull the legs out and this is it. This is the maximum height of this particular tripod. And as you can see, it's not particularly high. So we can extend the center column, but as already discussed in the video, if you do this, it is gonna become quite unstable. Now this type of tripod will hold a heavy camera like this Canon 6D, but it isn't recommended. So I can pop this in, it will hold the camera. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of movement here, which isn't ideal. So at the budget end, this type of tripod is really geared towards a much lighter camera. For me, the main problem with a budget tripod is they aren't very stable, which of course is the number one thing that a tripod should be. Next up is a travel tripod. Now this particular one is the Manfrotto B3. It comes in a nice little pack like so. And as you can see, it's very, very small and compact. Now, the way in which they get it to uh, pack down so small, which is pretty clever, is they invert the legs, or you invert the legs when you're packing it away. So to use this one, you just have to pull the legs down, lock them like so. And then this is the center column, which of course you can lower as you wish. Now this particular version has three levers. So there are four sections per leg on this one. And this, in terms of quality and the weight and the build, is a significant step up from the budget tripod that we just took a look at. Now, if I extend this legs or these legs to its fullest, you'll see that just like the, the uh, budget tripod, it's not the tallest of tripods, um, but it is designed to be compact and small and designed for be used uh, to be used when you're on the go. Now. This um, is a Manfrotto B3. This um, more professional tripod is also a Manfrotto. So it uses the same plate. So this will fit quite comfortably on here. Um, in terms of stability, whilst there is a slight wobble, it is so much more stable than the budget tripod. I think this is a really good choice if you wanna travel around and if you wanna travel light. Um, this particular one I've had for a few years, so the newer version of this is actually um, better and has got a few different um, features. They've made a few changes to it. So um, good travel tripod. I'll put some links in the description below for recommended travel tripods. But this one, bit more money than the compact tripod, but really useful. I use this quite a bit. Now take a look at this. This, I guess, for want of a better term, is a more professional style tripod, but that doesn't mean it's just for pro users. Now with this type of tripod, this particular one is the Manfrotto 055. Um, stability is amazing. This tripod is built like a tank. It's really, really sturdy. I've been featuring it in most of this video. And with this tripod, as with most pro tripods, you can, if you want to, remove the head. So this particular head is what's called a ball head. It just pops on like so. 
I can move the head around into any position and, and you can choose different heads to suit. So I've got another head for doing video. I've got a ball head here. I've got three way heads, which I use on my workshops. And uh, another option, which is pretty neat, is you can put on a um, completely different type of head that also has a different QR plate. So I've mentioned QR a few times in this video. That stands for quick release. It's the name of the rectangular plate that sits on the bottom of the camera and allows you to very quickly get on and off the tripod, hence the term QR plate. Uh, this particular QR plate is designed to be used with the Manfrotto heads only. Now, I have a Nikon Z6 I'm gonna grab in a moment. It's being used to record part of this video. And with that Nikon, I've got an L bracket on it, which fits a different type of head, and it's called an Arca Swiss. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this head for an Arca Swiss head, and I'm gonna show you how that works as well. But there are many advantages to buying a tripod like this. This particular model has a a really good feature that allows you to adjust the center column to a 90 degree angle and this is particularly useful if you want to photograph something from above so let me just make a couple of adjustments here clamp in the so I've got no worries about this tripod holding a heavy camera lens combination because it's so sturdy so if I'm doing a shot where I want to like a flat lay or maybe macro I can shoot from above which is really really useful I use this all the time and it's 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 options like this that you're going to find um, with the pro tripod so unfortunately these do obviously come at a, at a dearer cost more of a cost but you do get what you pay for when it comes to uh, tripods and look regardless whatever tripod you end up buying stability is one of the key things you want to look for in a tripod anyway let's um let's change the head and i'll show you how it works with the nikon so i've swapped the manfrotto head for a different ball head this features what is called an arca swiss plate now these are very very popular on my nikon z6 i've also got an l bracket now the l bracket runs the entire length of the body and also runs up the side and it has these grooves that are designed to clamp into place on the Arca Swiss head. So I'm now shooting in the landscape mode. If I wanna do a vertical or portrait shot, all I've gotta do is pop it in, clamp it into place, and it's really, really quickly. These are very popular with landscape photographers. And again, this is another reason to maybe consider spending a bit more money on a tripod. Having the ability to switch heads, um, depending on what type of photography I'm doing, is really, really cool. Now in this video, I've mentioned Manfrotto a lot. Now this is because they make great tripods. I've been using them for a long time. I've never had any issues with them, so I feel comfortable recommending them to you. I am certainly not sponsored by Manfrotto. All the tripods that I use, I've paid full retail price for. Now to wrap this part of the video up, let's take a look at mini tripods, often called tabletop tripods. Now, this one you may recognize, particularly if you are a regular viewer. This is the Manfrotto Mini Pixie Evo. It's a great little tripod and I've featured it on loads of my videos. This particular tripod sits in my bag nearly all the time. Um, it's, it's a pretty useful little tripod. You can extend the legs out like so. You can extend the legs further out for stability and it features a ball head so you can move the head around to suit. It really is very versatile and very simple and easy to use. Um, the next one I want to show you is a Joby tripod. You've probably seen these before, often called Gorilla Pods. Now with these, the legs can be bent into shape. So they're great if you're using it on uneven um, ground. Um, you can also wrap the legs around fence or a tree branch or something. Thing. So they're also very versatile. This particular one comes with the Arca Swiss head as well. So I could even put my Nikon on this if I want. Now, obviously with smaller tripods, stability can be a bit of an issue, um, but generally you're using these close to the ground anyway, and the further you put the legs, the more stable it's gonna be. So I actually use this quite a bit. Sometimes I, I attach uh, not a camera on top, but sometimes a light, uh, LED light panel or something like that. On, on the um, Manfrotto here, I've got a, a um, iPhone holder. So this comes with the tripod and all you've got to do is screw it onto the top like so, and then you can clamp your, your smartphone in as well. And I've also seen people using this 
um, for vlogging, doing videos and taking selfies and things. So these, these things are quite useful, very versatile. Um, probably not best for the really heavy cameras, of course, but if you've got a slightly lighter camera, a mirrorless camera or something like that, then these are actually very, very useful. And as I said, this never leaves my bag and I use it all the time. Now as a thank you for sticking out to the end of the video, I wanna share with you guys two bonus tips. Tip number one is if your camera has image stabilization built into the actual camera or the lens, turn it off. Image stabilization, sometimes called optical image stabilization, vibration reduction or steady shot is a really good feature. And it's particularly um, useful when you're using your camera handheld because it helps to minimize any shake. But when your camera's on a tripod, if you think about it, there shouldn't be any movement or shake for the vibration correction or image stabilization to have to fix. So we turn it off. If we don't, you may find that it actually works against you and can sometimes cause images to look a bit soft. So this is something you'll need to check. It may be built into your camera, it may be built into your lens, possibly even both. But if you've got it, turn off any image stabilization. Now bonus tip number two is, if you're doing a long exposure and your camera's on a tripod, use your camera's remote if you have one. Now if you don't have a remote, use your camera's self timer because every camera has a self timer. A remote means that you can actively take a picture without actually touching the camera, again, minimizing any unwanted shake or movement being introduced to the camera. But if you haven't got a remote, don't worry, a self timer will put a delay on the photo. So let's say you set up a five second self timer, press the shutter button, the camera's got further five seconds to actually settle down before it takes the picture. And this eliminates shake. Now this is a really good tip and often used by landscape photographers. So I wanna say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up because it does help the videos and the channel get noticed and I really do appreciate it and your support. If you're not already subscribed and you want more videos like this to help you learn to take better photos with your digital camera, consider subscribing to the channel. I do try to put out new videos every single week. If you wanna say hi, if you've got a question or comment, you can leave that in the comment section down below and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.